Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I am in the county of Kent, which is in the southeast of England, to see a buddy of mine, Aaron Garrett. Aaron, how are you doing? Really good, thanks Zed. Well, I appreciate you having me down for the day. Um, so, I need to rewind back before I kind of introduce this video. So, a few months ago, earlier this year, at the time of this video coming out, I was scouring Instagram and I'm always keeping an eye out, you know, for spoon carvers and craft people in general who I like the look of in terms of what they're doing and I came across Aaron's profile. Now Aaron had commented on my stuff previously, so I was aware of his name and I looked onto his profile and I thought, the boy knows how to carve. <laughs> he knows how to carve. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know I cover a lot of well-known spoon carvers in the general spoon carving community uh, here in the UK. And Along the way, as the spoon carving community has grown, which is amazing to see all over the world, what you're noticing are people springing up from these far-flung corners that are quietly doing their thing, and they're stamping their mark in terms of producing amazing spoonware. And Erin is one of those individuals. Now, moving into this year, I set myself a personal goal that as well as highlighting the already very well-known spoon carvers and continuing to do so, what I'm focusing a lot more is trying to put a spotlight on those that are maybe not as well known, uh, but are still very, very good at what they're doing. Erin, like I said, is one of those individuals I've looked at, been eyeing him up like a bit of a stalker for a few months, and realised actually, as well as being a great guy himself, in terms of his ethos, the way he carves, and what it is he carves, I really like what he was doing. So we got speaking, and I asked Erin how would he feel about me coming down with this camera to document his process so that you may learn and it was an enthusiastic yes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Aaron's very kindly invited me down for the day. We're blessed to have great weather today. Um, and so what we're gonna do on this particular video, this video is part one of a two-part series that we're filming today. So in this particular video, what Aaron is gonna be doing is teaching you how to carve a standard eating spoon. And in part two, he's going to be teaching you how to carve a small coffee scoop. So if that video, second video is already out by the time you're watching this, there will be a link below taking you to that second part of this series. Another thing to mention before we get straight into the meat and bones of this video is that this spoon carving tutorial you are going to see, what Erin has kindly done is actually drawn up a template so that you watching may be able to access that, download that and replicate the exact spoon that Erin is demonstrating throughout this video. So I thought I'd mention that now, I will mention that also at the end of this video. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the, the meat and bones of this video. Uh, what we're gonna do first, we're actually gonna look at some of Erin's existing spoons that he's carved, so you can get an idea, if you've not seen his work before, the kind of work that he does, where he gets his inspiration from, the style of what he does, and also to see that he actually really knows what he's doing. You know, he carves some beautiful spoons that we're gonna be seeing in a moment, and we're then gonna get straight into the rest of this tutorial. Now, another thing I will mention is, we are in a beautiful village where Erin lives. However, this is a residential area. So if you hear background noise, be it from cars or individuals or whatever, we are filming on a weekend, so most people are at home cutting their grass, doing their <laughs> thing. So we'll apologize in advance if we do hear a little bit of background noise, but the reality is this is real. You know, this is where Erin actually carves day to day, right? So we're gonna have a detailed look at his spot in a moment, but I will mention that from the word get go, that if you do happen to hear any background noise, that is the reason why. So before we get into having a look at the spoons that Erin has already carved, um, just briefly touching on yourself. So what is it you, you do day to day in terms of your work? Um, so my work, I work at an outdoor activity center um, and I'm on the maintenance team, kind of fixing things and um, all that sort of thing. But I'm currently on furlough, so lots of carving. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. at the time of this, unless you're living under a rock, obviously it's the current pandemic going on. So we are gradually easing out of the lockdown here in the UK. Um, and in terms of the spoon carving, how long have you been carving for? Um, I started in September 2018. Right. So year and a half, not, not right. quite two years yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So not that long then? No, not long Gosh. at all. Gosh. And it's really good for the amount of time he's been carving, you'll be seeing that in a moment. Well, once again, I do appreciate you having me down. It's a pleasure uh, to have uh, you. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have a look at a selection of uh, some of the spoons that Erin has carved. One thing I did forget to mention also, is if you look in the description below this video, you'll see a timestamp of all the relevant sections of this video. What this video, as are all my other videos that I cover on this channel to do with spoon carving and greenwood working, and crafts in general, is I create these as a teaching aid moving forward. So 
you'll see a timestamp down below in the description and that will take you to whatever part of the section of this video you want to see moving forward. So with your kind permission, Aaron, we're going to have a look at some of your spoons. Yep. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video where Aaron Garrett is going to be teaching you how to carve a spoon. So Aaron, we've got a selection of your spoons here. Would you like to yep. talk us through what we have? Okay. Um, yeah, so I've got a real variation of spoons here. You can see I don't really stick to one specific shape or style. Um, so this is one with milk paint, um, and that's two layers. That's a, a blue underneath and then a white on top. That's very similar to how uh, Dave Cockcroft works, Dave, Dave the Bodger. Um, and what, what, what is that? That one's cherry. Okay. And another one here, that one's laburnum, which is unfortunately a toxic wood, so I can't really eat with that one. That one's just for fun. And here I've got a couple that I've based on antique kind of style spoons, um, where the bowl is about the same sort of length as the handle, quite curvy ones. Um, I really enjoy making those. And they're both from beach, that one's spalted. Um, and then some more kind of rounded bowls. And again, that's beach. Um, that one's sycamore. Um, sycamore again. And I, I played with some texture on the handle on that one. So that one's got some grooves running across, which is quite nice when you're eating with it. Um, a little bit of fun for your thumb. Um, this one is quite a standard shape. Again, that's cherry. Um, that's probably more of a, a child's spoon. And then I've got these two here. So these ones are asymmetric shapes, and that's the sort of style we'll be uh, doing today. Um, simple spoons, that one's beach, a nice spalted one, and sycamore. Um, and yeah, that's just a nice, easy shape to work with. And is this what we're going to be working with today? Uh, we're working, we'll be making one similar to this. We've got some sycamore um, and a asymmetric shape like that. So Aaron, we're starting off with the axing. Yes. So yeah. what are we working with today? Um, so I've got a nice chunk of sycamore. Um, it's really nice straight grain and you can see it's got some spalting going on there. Um, so I'll just get started and I'm going to split this down. Um, I'll probably get two spoons out of this, so I'll just split it right in the centre and go from there. This one's got a tiny little pinhole knot there, which wouldn't be an issue, but I'll do it on this clearer grain section. Get my big caveman mallet. And when splitting, you've got to make sure that your axe is pointed away from you so it doesn't swing down into your leg or something. So, so one knock, and we're through. Yep, that's the bit I'm going with. Um, so first things first, I'm going to take off these corners here. Um, I don't square it up completely, but I'd like to have some flat surfaces to work with. So starting at the bottom and working up, that just releases all the fibers and it's much easier. And then from this side, I tend to just split that off. And again on these corners, So there we have that like that. Um, and now that means, because I've taken off that point, I can rest that down and it's not gonna wobble around too much. Um, so next step is to make a saw cut for the crank. Um, and there's not a real, I don't use a real measurement for where that goes. I just kind of picture the bowl there. Um, and so about here is perfect. <laughs> And I like a spoon with quite a lot of crank, so that's the 
the amount the bowl comes up from the handle. Um, and so a deeper cut will get you more crank in the spoon. And then I start on the handle end and again do some relief cuts down there and then work my way down. And I find sometimes it can bind up a bit and just pulling on the axe releases that. Not so much there. And so I'm aiming to get a nice flat surface here, um, which meets right down there. And the closer you get to this lump of wood down here, the lighter you have to be, because you don't want to split that right off, because that's your bowl. So I'll take that a little bit further up. Like that. And then this next part, um, again, this is why these flat sides help, because I can now put that like that, and I'm gonna come in from this angle to get the, the angle of the bowl. Um, and here I'm swinging more up and down and not towards my wrist, um, and that's the safety there. So it'll get stuck in the block before it goes to my wrist. What I'm doing here is I'm really watching the, the tip of the axe there and I'm just trying to get that to follow this line I've got going down um, and then the rest of the axe just follows. So I'm, I'm trying to get that tip right in there. Like that. And then I can just clean that up a little bit. that and there we have the angle the crank of the spoon right. so next step is to draw on around my template um, I like to draw a center line first um, it just helps to keep the template in the right place is that a uh Bendy ruler. It is a bendy ruler, yeah. It's it's very helpful for getting right in that angle there. And then, so this is a template that will be on my website. Um, and obviously it's asymmetrical, so this is better suited for right-handed people like that. Um, but if you're left-handed, you can just flip it over and that works. So I'll do it right-handed. And trying to line up the center line on the template with the center line I've drawn on the wood. And I've got a little line there across which I want in the crank. So that there. And just draw around it. Doesn't have to be super accurate. Like that. There we have our spoon and I might just tidy up some bits, make it a bit bolder so I can see it better. And you can always bring that across there and join up the bowl. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm going to saw in to these lines here um, because when I split down here to carve down to the handle it means it won't split right through the bowl. Um, you can axe in from either side um, and work your way down to there but this is much quicker um, and it's really easy. So. Like that and again on the other side. 
There we go. And I don't want to go right up to the line because when I get onto the knives, I don't want to have to kind of get underneath the saw cut. So I leave it just a little bit away from the line um, and that gives me plenty of space. I also cut the length. Um, and here, um, and at that end actually, I like to saw as close to the line as I can so I don't have to axe off or cut off any extra. Um, it's just little time savers. <laughs> Um, so this is a samurai saw, um, it's a UK company, it's a Japanese pull saw, so it cuts on the pull stroke. Um, yeah, it's kind of the UK's answer to silky. Yeah, interesting. Right, my next step, um, so I'll be splitting off down here, um, either side of the handle. But first, just to make the split a little bit more predictable, I'm gonna take off some of this bulk off the back. Um, and I'll come at a bit of an angle as well. There we go, and now, because of this, the way I've, um, I've split this wood, I can't actually see how straight the grain is. I know it is straight, but this just mitigates any problems that I might have. And so here, I just rest the axe on top and move the whole lot together. And then you can hear it change and there's the split. And again on this side, Okay. So that's split down quite neatly either side. Um, and so here, the way I've done the handle, I've got a high point here and then it goes down and down. And so I'll have to axe this way on the handle at the top and then I'll axe down from the high point there. So I'll start by doing the very end of the handle. can do another bump cut or drop cut like that and just keep splitting bits off. There we go. So that's that side done. Um, and the next side, same thing. And you'll notice that twisting the axe in those cuts is really helpful for relieving the fibers and getting them off. Um, so that's about as close as the line, as, as close to the line as I'll go. Um, that little amount there is really easy to take off with the knife, so I'll just leave that there. And now here, that's really bulky there, and so I try to split off um, parallel to this flat surface here. Um, I split off about the depth of the bowl. Um, so I just come down here, split that off, maybe a little bit more. And now that is the maximum depth that my bowl can be. Um, 
So I'll leave that like that and just follow that cut round because at the moment there's a lot of bulk at the end here. And again, I'm trying to get that parallel to that top line, um, which isn't exactly flat, but that's all right. So I'm happy with that. That's about the same sort of width as that back there. And then I'm going to come off at an angle from the handle and just split some off the side there. like that and then I'll carry that all the way down trying to keep this distance about the same all the way down there we go and again on the other side there I've gone quite thin but I'm not too worried because I've still got plenty of wood there between my line and where I'm cutting. Like that. And now I'll just split these edges off. Same way as I did the handle. So now I'm just going to follow the rest of that shape around, um, trying to keep to my line. Is that bit done on this side? Now this side is the tricky one because it's quite easy for me to see my lines here because I'm leaning right over. But here I have to lean back to see my lines, which means I have to extend my arm and that makes me have a little less control. So I just nibble at it a little bit more. I take a bit more time because I'm having to use more power and have less control. Um, so that's not quite as neat as the other side, but again, the knife will very easily remove that. And here, for the same reason, um, these little corners can be tricky to remove, especially when you're leaning right back on that one. So here, I come back on the underside of the bowl and just remove as much as I can because it's much easier to remove material like that on both sides. See, that's really thin now. And so when I do these cuts and come round, I've got a lot less material to remove, which means I'm having to use less power um, and can be more accurate. Like that. And again on this side. So now I just need to refine the side a bit because I've got a lot of bulk there and at the tip there. So those little angles that I did on the side there, I just follow them right down the handle. Like that. Again on this side. And then I take off that ridge in the middle. There we go, and there's still quite a lot of bulk there, so I'll just remove that. And a bit more on the sides. Like that, and I've got a fairly even rim around there. and. Here I could just keep taking little bits off and keep coming back to it, but it's probably 
quicker just to come at it with the knife. Just take those bits off. There we go, I'll leave it there. Right, so onto the knife work now. Um, and I'm using this blade by Adam Ashworth. Um, and so I bought the blade from him and I handled it and made this little wooden sheath for it. Um, and it's a brilliant blade. It's, it's nice and thin uh, up the top, which means I can really easily get round these corners um, without it snagging too much. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work around my line. Um, and that means that when I work on the top, I don't have to worry about the, the shape and or redraw my line um, because it's all to the shape of the line. So I'll start on the handle. And I'm just doing a simple thumb push cut like that. And then just like the axing, I've got to come this way from the high point down the handle and then this way to the bowl. And I'll do um, this pull cut. Like that. And then again on this side, but I'm working blind, so I'll take off little bits and then check my lines. And then I can switch back to the thumb push. And I don't mind about leaving lots of shavings there. I might break them off a bit, but um, I'm not worried about getting a clean surface there just yet. Like that. So that's good enough for the handle. And now the bowl. So I tend to use the thumb push again. I don't know why, I was never quite comfortable with doing this cut. Um, it never quite felt right in my hand. So I just tend to do thumb push for most of the way around. And part of the reason why an asymmetrical shape is so easy is because if you do make a little wrong cut, it doesn't matter so much because it's, it's not supposed to be symmetrical anyway. Um, so that's really helpful. And then this is the bit where the tip is really helpful. Um, but again, I'm just kind of roughly going around my line. So I'm not so worried about that being a clean finish at the moment. This is the last little bit. So I just have to keep going back and checking my lines because again, I'm working blind here. I can't see my lines. There we go. So that's good enough for the um, going around the lines. And now I'm going to work on this top profile. Um, I'll just grab this spoon and show you what I'm aiming for. Um, so I like a nice swoopy handle like that. And at the moment that's just very flat. So I take quite a lot off here, a, a big bulky bit. Um, so I can get that kind of flowing line. Um, I just think that's really comfortable and looks nice. So I start on the handle next from the top. Um, again, coming up to this, this grip here. And I work on one side at a time. And I'm twi again twisting the knife just like the axe is helpful. Here I'm pushing with my fingers, I'm not pulling so much. Um, and my elbow is nice and tucked in, so I can't cut myself because I can't go any further than that. 
Um, that's pretty good. So you can see that line that I've cut, it's a nice swoopy line, um, which makes a nice flowing shape. And so I do that again on this side. And try and get those lines about the same. And looking down from the top of the handle, I can see I need to take off some more on this side. Just keep checking. A little bit more. There we go, I'm happy with that. And then I just take out this bulk in the center. It's much easier to work um, on these kind of points and the edges rather than taking that whole lot at once. There we go. So that's got a nice flowing shape to it now. And I stop here, so that's a high point. It comes up and then back down. Um, and so with that bit, I'll just take enough off to remove my pencil line. And then I dive it right down into the bowl there. So you've got that nice flowing shape. Okay, and the next thing to do is, so I'm looking at the handle there and I need to match up the bowl. And at the moment, the bowl is off at that angle. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna take an angled cut just around the edge to get a nice straight line all the way around. It saves, and by doing this angled cut, it saves having to deal with all that bulk in the middle. Just check that. Yeah, and then come this side. And this side I didn't need to take too much off because that was the high side. And just Keep looking and keep checking. So it's a bit wobbly at the end here. And I just need a bit more off on that side. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So it's not perfect, but you can see now this flat matches with that flat line around there. Okay, and then, so I've, I've taken it up to this point where the crank meets, um, and then I just need to, I've got my saw line there, so I'll get under that, and then bring that up to that high point there, just by twisting, and that is going slightly against the grain there, but, because it's a sharp knife and just the tip of it, it can do that. Um, and then same on this side, I'll just bring that up. So for the sake of the viewers who may not be familiar with the terms you're using going against the grain, mm -hmm. do you care to explain what you mean by that? Yeah, so we've got the, I'll just cover that up. Um, so we've got the grain fibers running straight across like that um, and then this is coming down and then that's coming down that way and so by going with the grain I'm cutting 
kind of imagine it like paper and cutting down across the paper. And then with going against the grain, that would be kind of coming in and it gets caught um, in the grain fibers. And so if I was trying to cut up here with the grain running across this way, I'd be cutting into those fibers and it would catch, whereas coming down this way, it's cutting with it and I get a nice clean surface. Yeah. Um, so I've got that top face pretty much there. I'll just take off a little bit more at the edge of the bowl here. Like that. And it's just constantly checking, making sure, sure your lines are right. And I can also look at it from this way and make sure that these curves coming up here are about the same, which they are. Um, and so that's good. Um, I'm going to leave that there for now and go onto the hook knife. Cool, so now we're moving onto the hook knife. Um, and this is a wood tools, so a Robin Wood hook knife. It's the compound curve, uh, a right handed one. And this is just a little box case I made for it. After I saw Adam Hawker's, I thought I had have to have one that's kind of, <laughs> kind of similar. Um, yeah, and I put a bit of leather in there as well so it's not rattling around too much. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come across the grain first this way um, and then I will come back and come down the grain. Um, and with this compound curve, um, it's got this quite narrow point up here which means that is really good for taking off um, bulk and digging in deep because I'm not trying to drag the whole surface of the knife through it, it's just that little bit up there. And so I just keep coming across um, and keeping my thumb out of the way so when I exit the cut I'm not going to hit my thumb. Um, and that's about enough. I just get a little hollow like that and then I switch to coming down the grain like this. Um, and here I've, I've moved my grip from being quite choked up on the blade like that to right down the bottom. Um, and that's because my fingers here become a pivot point and I'm just rocking on that pivot point, taking cuts like that. And so here, what I'm trying to do is work my way out to the edge and get a nice even rim around it. So with each pass, you're working up until the previous? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm constantly removing marks from the last one. Um, and it all stops here because that's the, um, that's right where the saw cut is there. So that's a change of grain direction there. Um, and here, because I'm right handed and the tip of it is coming down this left side that side is easy, whereas this side it's hard to get round like that. So I switch grips here and go back to this choked up grip. And I just come round like that. And I'm kind of bracing the spoon on my chest again. I'm just coming round and taking really small cuts. I'm not trying to remove big cuts because my thumb is there. It's, I've got potential to hit that. So just nice small cuts that don't require lots of power. And there we go. And now I'm gonna come from this way. So the grain changes there and I'm gonna come down the grain here. And again, another grip, but I've got my hand right back on the spoon knife and I'm using that pivot again. Coming across and just twisting down that bit. And that's quite a short bit there. Um, there's not much room to get nice long clean cuts. So I just take off 
a good amount there and then I come across the grain again and take out all that centre bit. Like that. Um, I think I'll just take off some more at the back here. across the grain to remove that. So that's the bowl, roughly done. Um, and now I'll switch back to the straight knives. The reason I did the outside edge, then the top face, and I didn't go to this back face is because once I've done this, I know the, the kind of rough depth of the bowl and if I went straight from this face to that face I could take off way too much and then kind of struggle to get the right thickness there. So by doing this it's much easier to work to that depth there with the straight knife than it is to work to whatever I've done there with the hook knife. So back to this one, and now I'll work on the back, and so that's quite thick there. What I'll do, actually, first, now that I've taken out the bulk in the middle, it's much easier to see this line around here, and so I'll just get that nice and even first and take it flat rather than at the angle we did before. Here I need to be careful of my finger that it's not up here because I could quite easily catch myself, which I have done before. And I'll keep checking that. So I just need a bit more off up here. Bring that back down there. So that's pretty flat now. Um, and so now I'm gonna get that bit nice and thin. And this chest lever grip is brilliant for removing quite a lot of bulk and it can be quite accurate. sending shavings all over you, Zed. It's like shrapnel. <laughs> there we go. And now that's a fairly even thickness around there. And I'll just take off some of this stuff in the centre. And then, so I've got that thickness right around there. Um, but again, where this crank bit is, there's a grain change here. So I can come back this way and try and bring that right round. And that is helpful for coming back down the handle as well. So I'll just do it on this side as well. good to switch the knife around like this and bring it back. There we go and now so those angles I've made there I'll bring them all the way down the handle Like 
that. And here I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm doing a cut and then turning it. Like that. And then take out that bulk in the middle. Like that. And there we've got quite a nice flowing shape, um, which I like. Okay, so when I used to carve spoons, I, well, I still do carve spoons, but um, I used to carve them so I would get to this sort of point when they were still green and then I would leave it to dry. But now I just, I go the whole way with it. Um, I found the finish is pretty much the same and this is kind of dry but it's still got a greenness to it so it's still got some moisture in it. Um, so instead of putting it aside and coming back to it, I now go back around the shape and I refine that to the final shape, um, removing any bumps. I just keep going around and trying to get one long shaving when you're going around the edge here is really helpful because it means you don't get any bumps. So for the benefit of those who may not be familiar with the whole principle of leaving it to dry before you finish off the cuts, mm -hmm. um, for their benefit, could you briefly explain why you would typically leave it to dry? Um, yeah, so you typically leave it to dry because you can get a better finish on dry wood. Um, and there's also movement when it dries. So having that extra bulk means if, say for example, the bowl twists a bit as it dries, then with that extra bulk you've got there, you can try and correct that. Um, but I found getting it thin enough and kind of doing it completely when it's at this stage, when it's got some moisture but it's dried enough, I don't find I get much movement in it at all. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I do it the whole way. Um, yeah, I think that's the main reason why, why people leave it. Yeah, so as I say, I'm, I'm working around the edge. Um, I'm looking for bumps and I'm, I'm feeling for them as well. There's a little one there. There we go. Okay. And the same on the handle. Get that nice and even. And again, I'll just leave those shavings there and come back to clean up that little bit later. Yeah. And it's quite good to hold it up to the light because um, then you can really easily spot any imperfections and asymmetry in the handle or the bowl, although the bowl is asymmetrical um, because you just see the silhouette, you don't see all the, the lines and the, the grain. So I'm happy with that. And again, now I'm just going over all of the faces. So I'll start on the handle. And these will now be my finishing cuts. And then one down the middle. Take that over that little bit. Like 
bit. Okay, and then the final aligning of the bowl. I'll just take off some little bits to make sure it's just right. And this is harder with an asymmetrical bowl because there's more material in different places. Um, so it's harder to see where there needs to be some taken off. And then a little bit on this side. So again, I can look from behind and I can see I need a little bit more off there. And I'm twisting the knife up that grain change. Yep, I'm happy with that. And so now I'll move on to the hook knife again and do the, the final shaping of the bowl. All right, so moving back onto the hook knife now. Um, and this, so this is the final kind of shaping of the bowl. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the rim nice and even. And so I know I've got a, a fairly flat line going around there. So I'll try and match the inside to the outside. Um, it is tempting to start on the inside and work out again, but you end up just taking out more and more from the middle and the bowl gets deeper and deeper. So I start on the rim. Like that. I'm trying to get that nice even line around there. And here, I just come across there. Go. So I've got a fairly even line going around there uh, for the rim and now I can blend that into the, the centre of the bowl. and I'm feeling it to see if there's any high spots that I need to take off. And when it gets to this stage, I'm just really lightly dragging the knife across to get rid of high spots and to blend it all in. So you can see there's hardly any shavings coming off because they're so small. So that's that half of the bowl done and now I need to switch around again and take some off that way. And so that's the sort of width I'm going for for the rim. And then I'll just carry that around from both ends and join it up. And there is a bit in the middle where you have to go across the grain. Um, unless you're very skilled and you can get the cuts to meet, but I've never been able to do that. Like that. So that's that side pretty much done. And then this side, um, it's a bit tricky to get around there, so I, I kind of do this turning cut like that, just turning the blade around. Uh, 
And here my thumb is actually in the way of the cut, but it's really light. So it's, it's just touching like that, it's not cutting. There we go, so that's the rim all the way around so I can just focus on cleaning up the bowl and I'm trying to come down the grain as much as possible because that's how you get the cleanest finish. So just removing any high spots. Like that, spinning it around again. And then there will be a little bit that I need to come across. And I can switch it around and come this way as well. I'm still just feeling for the high spots because it's, this is the most important part. It's got to be comfortable when you're eating. So making sure there's no high spots like that means it'll be very comfortable when you're eating and very smooth. There we go, I'm happy with that. So back onto the straight knife. Okay, so we've done this top face and the bowl, and so now it's working on this back again. Um, and just like in, in the bowl, I'm focusing on getting that rim nice and thin there. You can hear that's chattering a bit, so that's not a clean cut. So I'll just go over that again. So that's nice and thin there. And again on this side. I'm just gonna switch to this one. There we go, so I've got that all the way around there. And I've still got quite a lot of bulk in the middle here. So I'll just now blend it all together. And I'm feeling it to make, make sure the thickness is right. And here, because I've done that rim first, it means I can make these cuts and then they just come off here. They're not touching the rim anymore. Um, so it is just focusing on the center. And I know once I've blended it in, because it will start taking off bits off the rim like that, which is fine because it can always go a bit thinner. Again, just feeling, and I need to make sure there's no high spots on the back either, because that'll be uncomfortable in your mouth. Yay! 
there we go i'm happy with that um i'll just take off some of the center here um so i prefer it so the center has the the most thickness and then it gets thinner out to the edges um even though they might be seen as the weakest point actually they're they're supported well when the center's thick um and also it doesn't mean i'm gonna means i'm not gonna go right through um in the middle and, and make a hole in the center which it would then become a straining spoon okay and i'm switching back around here Okay, and now I can come back down the handle here. And again, just like the bowl, I'm trying to get that thickness nice and thin. Um, so it's comfortable. You don't want a, a really bulky spoon. to this one so I can I can see what I'm doing and here once I get to this point I can't actually cut any further because I'm so close to myself so I actually just start pulling the spoon through the knife like that and then I'll take some off in the center And again, I can switch to the thumb push. That, that one can be used on almost any part of the spoon. There we go, a little high spot there. That's pretty good. And so now I've still got these little fluffy bits here in, in the grain change direction um, and so I'll just clean them up and if they don't clean up then that one didn't because I've still got a bit of the saw cut there so I'm just going to bring that in a little bit more like that which I'll have to match on this side So with the tighter curves, you're using the tip of the knife? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so the tip is really agile in these curves. And because there's not so much bulk behind the blade, it means it can just get right round those corners like that. And that's pretty smooth there. I'll just take a little bit off there like that. And then that's nice and smooth. And then again on this side. Might need to come back and forth a little bit. And sometimes it seems like, yeah, that's good. It seems like no matter what you do, it won't clean up. And so that's when I would wait for it to dry completely. Um, and then I would come back to that bit because once it's dry, it's not quite so fluffy and the fibers are all set in place. Um, so I'm just kind of just looking at the spoon now, looking for kind of
kind of a shape I don't like or a high spot and just going over that. Okay, that's good. So now um, I've just got the end to sort out, so I've still got my pencil line there and I'll change that to something nice at the end. And then the, the little micro chamfers um, just to take off the sharp edges of the corner. So, okay, so, yeah, so I'm just gonna do this end bit now. Um, you can still see the pen uh, mark there, so. I'm just going to come in like this and I tend to come in from both sides and get a little high spot in the middle. I think that looks quite nice. Also, I can tell from there, I've got it nice and thin there, but there, there's still quite a bit of bulk. So I'll just take some of that off first. even. It's not quite even there, so I'll just take a bit more off on that side. There we go, something like that. And then there's still a bit of pen there, but that's okay. So now it's the micro chamfers, um, which are the, the really tiny little cuts, because all of these edges are quite sharp, especially on the bowl and the handle on these sides here. So just by taking off a tiny little cut, it, it means it's much more comfortable and you don't get caught on those corners. There we go, so that's a really, really tiny cut and that just smooths off that corner. I'll do the same on the end here, which will get rid of that pen. There we go. Um, and now I'll do the bowl. And so here I work back like this. And then I switch, so I'm coming down here rather than in into the grain like that. And then here there's a bit where both the grain changes meet. And so I tend to make that quite wide there. Like that. And then and that's a nice shape there. I still need to come back on this side. And then 
again. Nice big bit there. There we go. And now I've just got the back side of the handle and the back side of the bowl here. this way again. Like that. So that's the bowl done. I used to do a little chamfer on the inside of the bowl as well, but with burnishing my spoons, so um, I've got a little pebble that I use and I rub it really hard and that compresses the fibres and kind of polishes it um, and that gets rid of any sharp edge there anyway so I don't bother going back inside the bowl to take off that edge. Um, the last bit is just down the handle here so coming down like this again There we go. So I would say that's done. So now we've got our finished spoon. Um, I'll leave this to dry and yeah, there's not much moisture in it, but I'll leave it to dry anyway. Um, and then if I want to decorate it, I'll do some milk paint on the handle or something and I'll burnish it. I only really burnish inside the bowl of the spoon um, and get that nice and smooth. And then... In terms of your drying process, what do you do to dry your spoons? I just leave it on a shelf. Um, I don't bother leaving it in shavings or anything um, because it's so thin. There's, if the wood does move, it won't crack because there's not a lot of bulk on it. Um, so I just leave it out and dry it like that. And with your burnishing, do you do it at this stage or do you let it dry first? I'll wait for it to dry first and then I'll burnish and, and then I'll oil it. I use uh, linseed oil. Um, it's a, a curing oil so it makes a hard layer on it and I only use a really tiny bit. I don't dip it in or anything. Just put some on a little bit of cloth and, and wipe it over and then I leave that to dry in the sun. How long would you leave it for after the oiling? Um, it depends on how thin it is and how much I've put on and what kind of day it is. If it's really strong sun, I, it, it won't take long. Um, and a thin coat of oil means it won't take long. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Erin, you stud. <laughs> <laughs> first time on video and first time teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah never taught that. before. He rocked it out of the park. <laughs> Seriously, all jokes are one side. He's done really well. Thank you. So, um, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed that video. A couple of things to remind you of, as mentioned at the beginning of this video. Number one, there is a timestamp down below of all the relevant sections should you want to jump to a particular section in the process that Aaron has used the carvey spoon from start to finish. Uh, secondly, I've also reminded you that in the beginning and also I remind you now that Aaron has very kindly put together a template that you can use, the very template that he used to carve this particular spoon. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put two links down below. I'm gonna put a link to the template. Uh, and what Aaron has actually kindly done, he's created a page on his newly built website, yep. a newly launched website, um, erangarrett.co.uk. Yes, yeah. Uh, and the link to that will be down below. Now what Aaron has done is created a page where you can click and download the template for you to use the exact one that he's used uh, in this video. Also on that page, he's got two other things going on. Uh, number one, at the time of putting this video out and potentially moving forward as well, Aaron has carved some spoons similar uh, 
in and about is the kind of the spoon that is carved in this video. At the very least, he's carved obviously other spoons that we've shown just previously, and he continues to do so. So what he's also done on that page is put one or two listings of spoons that are either similar to what he's carved in his video or similar. And obviously, should you want to support a maker, then obviously that's a great way of doing that. And obviously you'll have the opportunity on that page. One slight caveat I will add to that, and I'll add this with complete sincerity. The way I learned my spoon carving and many others have learned, is to look at carvers that they like the look of, they admire, they like their spoons, their style, etc. And by having that physical spoon in front of you, it's a great way of looking at something you're kind of basically trying to, to mimic, trying to kind of get to a point where it's as good as the spoon you have in your hands. And so for me, I made a habit from the word get-go when I started out to acquire spoons from different makers. And depending on what kind of mood I'm in, to have a physical spoon in front of me uh, in order for me to kind of uses inspiration for when I'm carving my own. I don't know if you found the same. Yeah, definitely. I've learned a lot from other, other makers' spoons, yeah. Because it's a different thing, obviously, watching on video, seeing images, uh, it's a different thing actually having a physical spoon yeah. in your hand. There's so many subtle nuances, because it's such, essentially, a small item, right? So there's all these subtle nuances that you get in perspective mm -hmm. that you get by having the physical spoon in your hand. So I wanted to mention that as a side caveat. If there's something you're not aware of already, even recently, I had a couple of friends that you know, are getting into spoon carving, I immediately recommended that they go and find a spoon carver they like on Instagram, elsewhere, or people that I've covered with before, acquire a spoon and hold it in your hand. And I'll tell you what, in a short space of time, you know, of them doing that, the spoon carving process rocketed. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, there's something physical to hold in front of them, yeah. to compare, to look at, you know, to get inspiration from. So there you go. So you'll have an opportunity on that page also to download the template, to also look at the uh, Aaron's spoons that he has available for you to purchase and own one for yourself in the process of supporting a fellow maker. And also a third thing as well is Aaron has just recently started a email newsletter, which is completely free. So he's gonna be emailing roughly once a week just to update you on what he's got going on, the different things that he's carving, the kind of inspiration that he's getting. So on that page also, you'll have an opportunity and I would encourage you to join his newsletter to keep up to date with what Aaron has got going on. So that's the first thing, a link to the spoon templar where you can access the spoon templar. You can have a look at Aaron's spoons for you to purchase for yourself should you want to do so. And also to join his email newsletter. The second link I'm going to pull is a link to Aaron's Instagram. So Aaron's very active on Instagram, carving day to day, week to week, and also everything in between. So you'll be able to keep close, um, watch on kind of what Aaron is up to, up close and personal, as well as with your kind permission, if people have any questions or queries in regards to the videos that they watch, would it be possible for them to contact you via yep. Instagram? Yep, through Instagram, and I've got a contact form on my new website. <laughs> So, there you go. So, Eric, once again, a sincere thank you. Thank and you. And you've been an absolute star. You've done really well, once again, considering it's his first time on video, let alone his first time teaching. Um, and like I said, the links will be down below to the template and all the stuff related to that. A link below also to his Instagram. And please do give him a follow there. And one caveat to all of that, I do want to mention, that if you gain any value from this whatsoever, it's kind of our way of saying thank you to Aaron. That would mean the world to me for you to go check out his template, download that, and also join his newsletter, and to give him a follow on Instagram. Two final things to wrap up. Number one, there's a second video as part of the series that we're gonna be filming yes. now, which is a small coffee scoop, which are beautiful, right? And so if that video is already out by the time you're watching this video, I'll put a link below, below to that also, should you want to go check that out. Um, and secondly, the other thing I wanted to mention is if you do carve a spoon using Erin's process, or at least inspired in part by Erin's process, it will mean the world to both of us for you to tag us. Yeah. On Instagram, you know, I'm getting tagged every day from videos I've done years ago <laughs> of people making bark sheets and doing this and doing that. And it's always great to see yeah. people who've been inspired in some shape or form by the content that you put out. So if you've used Erin's process in any shape or form, It'll be awesome. Once again, the link to his Instagram is down below so you can check his handle out there. And tag away, tag away, no matter when you're watching this video, either when it's come out or years into the future, right? Uh, please do tag Aaron uh, and myself and let us know kind of how you're getting. And it's always great to see how people are kind of using the information that yeah. Aaron has shared to kind of further them on their spoon carving journey, whether you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced. So before we wrap up the video, are there any last parting words from yourself? 
it's been a joy. <laughs> thank you for watching. <laughs> no, he's done really well. So once again, thank you so much, Erin. Thank you. We're going to be filming part two now. So once again, if that's out by the time you're watching this, a link down below. And there you go. That is a wrap for this video. And as always, my friends, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From myself, Zed Outdoors, and Erin Garrett, peace out.